Joining me now on set is California Democratic Congresswoman Judy Chu. Congresswoman, thank you so much for being here. Oh, thank you for having me. Well, I have to just ask you, you heard one of the fiery remarks about uh, preserving IVF access nationwide. What did you make of the president's speech tonight? I was so ecstatic that he talked about reproductive freedom right at the start. Mm -hmm. uh, we actually had 40 of our guests uh, all on the issues of reproductive rights, whether mm. it was IVF or abortion providers or um, uh, patients that could not get the access to uh, reproductive uh, medicine. And um, so it was our biggest turnout ever. Wow. And so for him to acknowledge it and to say that this was a key issue for Americans was just something we needed to hear. What do you make of uh, a lot of people heard this speech and said it sounded a lot like a campaign speech right off the bat. Do you accept that? Is that what you wanted to hear tonight? He said the things we wanted to hear. I was there in the audience. I could feel the energy as he was talking about the key issues that we needed to address. You know, he wants to move the country forward, and I think he communicated that aggressively, vigorously, energetically, that's what we wanted to hear. Let me get you to respond to the Republican response. Katie Britt called the president, quote, dithering and diminished. I don't know if you had a chance to watch her entire speech, but how do you respond to that? Do you think the president did enough to answer those critics who have expressed concerns that, that he might be too old to serve another four years? We must have been watching a different speech. <laughs> I saw him being so direct about so many proposals including new proposals on how to make a house more affordable, on getting um, 500 to prescription drugs uh, prices negotiated. Uh, he talked about uh, making the cap on prescription drugs for $2,000 for everybody. Mm. What do you make of that moment, that fiery moment that he had where he held up the pen, and he said, I will say her name, Lake and Riley. Some people have noted he didn't quite get her name right. But really answering his critics who've said, say her name, and basically calling out Republicans for not passing the bipartisan deal that was struck in the Senate that never actually passed the Senate because Donald Trump encouraged Republicans to scuttle it. Well, he ad-libbed, <laughs> and I like that. I like the fact that he was mm. able to answer her back. Uh, he was on his toes. And I like the fact that he called out Republicans for being a do-nothing, even though they've been saying they wanted a border solution all this time. Yeah. Um, do you think that that message on immigration was enough to, obviously it energized Democrats, do you think it was enough to reach out and win over some of those Nikki Haley voters, some of those moderates, those independents who we might need to win re-election? Well, he was um, very strong in terms of talking about what needed to be done and uh, laid out those proposals in a vigorous manner. So I think I think he was uh, convincing on, on that issue. And uh, one thing's for sure, what's going on now isn't working. Mm. Let me ask you about what you heard on the Middle East. He obviously announced uh, the fact that they are going to move to get more aid mm -hmm. into Gaza. He called for and talked about the fact that they are working really hard to get this ceasefire, this temporary yeah. ceasefire in exchange for a release of hostages. He didn't go so far as the vice president has gone in calling for a permanent ceasefire. Did he go far enough for you? Well, he did call for a ceasefire mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, for now, and that is very important. I think he really needed to reinforce it, and people needed to hear him say that. Uh, this proposal for this, this temporary port... Um, uh, for the humanitarian aid. That was very intriguing. And I felt that uh, this is also something people needed to hear because they needed to hear what concrete measures there mm. would be that would actually get that aid into mm. the very desperate people of Gaza. I want to have you respond to your colleague, Congresswoman Jayapal, the chair, of course, of the Progressive Caucus, who told my Capitol Hill colleague that if Democrats lose this election, it will be because of their policy in the Middle East. What do you make of that? Do you think that's an accurate assessment? It is a very critical issue uh, that we need to address very seriously. And uh, I think people are looking for um, 
humanitarian aid into Gaza. They do not want to see starving children. Uh, yeah. They do not want to see indiscriminate bombing. Uh, it's got to stop. And uh, yes, we, Israel has a right to defend itself, but it must be much more targeted. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.